We march in a protest rally. We shout angry protests. We want to save the environment. We want to save the country. When everything is over, we go home peacefully. Relaxing in our comfortable home, we enjoy life with many modern amenities. Watching movies in HD TV, texting friends with our smartphones, watching YouTube on our laptops and sharing pictures on Facebook with our personal computers. As a Rakyat, I would like to ask my fellow countrymen, do we realise what are the elements and materials used to manufacture those gadgets and electrical appliances? More importantly, do we realise that rare earth is one of the key materials? As a Malaysian, as a Rakyat, and as a human being who loves the environment and loves this country, I would like to voice out the facts we have overlooked. It is about rare earth. Rare earth are moderately abundant in the Earth's crust, some even more abundant than copper, lead, gold and platinum. It's about collecting what's on the surface of the Earth, turning it into something that can be used by everyday people. There are over 40 companies across the US, Australia, Canada and the UK that produce and export rare earth. There are four in Japan and one in South Korea. The country that produces and exports the most rare earth is China, with 31 companies. They produce and export rare earth and they are also important trade partners of Malaysia. Back in 2010, world demand for rare earth is estimated at 136,000 tonnes per year, with global production around 133,600 tonnes and it shows no signs of stopping as world demand for rare earth element continues to rise. And the demand is projected to reach at least 185,000 tonnes annually by 2015. Korea Resources Corporation, Korea. Sumitomo Corporation, Japan. Sino Steel Corporation, China. By the way, just for your information, Sumitomo Corporation has a rare earth plant in Kazakhstan. And do you know what that is for? Well, for your information, the Sumitomo plant in Kazakhstan is to cater the estimated demand for elements that would be used to manufacture hybrid and electric cars. As we're all aware, hybrid and electric cars are environmentally friendly products. People go crazy over gadgets. People go crazy over social networks. Most people say, I can't go on a day without my smartphone. Fun and helpful, aren't they? So why should we protest against the industry of processing and exporting rare earth when we can't even stop ourselves from buying those gadgets? Stop Linus? Why? Because of safety and the environment? Our government has made it clear about its priority on public safety and protecting the environment, which was why when the government granted the temporary operating license to Linus, a specific condition attached, demanding the company to remove all the residue generated by its plant out of Malaysia. I repeat, temporary. This includes all products made from the residue. Should Linus fail to comply with this condition, the Atomic Energy Licensing Board is empowered under Section 22 of the Atomic Energy Licensing Act 1984, Act 304, to suspend or revoke the temporary operating license and order Linus to immediately cease operation. I repeat, suspend and revoke. Are we demonstrating for the environment or are we demonstrating because we are poisoned by the opposition's political spinners? They said that Linus has a high radiation level. Look at this table. Do you know that radiation from a pack of burning cigarettes is 214 times more than the radiation from Linus? Look at others. Now, look at Linus radiation level. It is safe. They say Linus is a nuclear power plant. When the truth is, Linus is a simple chemical processing plant operating at atmospheric pressure and ambient temperature. Therefore, there will be no fire or explosion that will cause radioactive dispersion and contamination into the environment similar to a nuclear plant accident. And as a Rakyat, just like the rest of you, I refuse to be conned by these ruthless political spinners. Look at the other side of the coin. 
processing. And exporting rare earth is a growing industry that many big international companies, including those in China, Japan and Korea, are competitively involved. Why not Malaysia? Should consumerism and the unending thirst for fancy gadgets be blamed for the growing of such allegedly unsafe industry? Maybe not. Why should we blame our nice smartphones and gadgets, right? Wait, aren't you watching this video using a gadget now?